Welcome back, ladies and gents. This is part five. And uh, yeah, what we find in this episode, well, let's just see what you guys think. How's it looking, Dad? Yeah, just more uh, heaps and heaps of bog. Don't know how thick it is. I'm just trying to have a bit of a look, see what's what in that sill there. But yeah, as you can see, guys, she's pretty full. So it looks like it's had a half-baked kind of a patch put in it. Until I get it all out, God knows what's in there. But that's all, that's all gone here. We're going to replace all that. All that bit of that pinch weld, it's gone. And then up here, where they've had the crack at this pillar, um, that's different. They've just kind of just thrown a, a, like a dirty big patch over the top of rust. Looks like there, and then they come around this side and they've smashed another hunk of crap in here and just put it over the top of this um, this hinge plate but I don't even know here what they've done it's just this it's just no profile line it's just rubbish it's just a, it's actually an absolute butchering mess there and then if you go on the inside of that pillar I've taken a little piece of that inner pillar away to make a bit of a window to try and get in there and see but yeah, if you have a look at that, wow, that is just pure butchery. It's sort of hard to believe that people do that sort of work. But I'm going to have to get in there and tidy it all up and I'll have to cut this, this mess out, the abortion on the, on the outside, clean it all up bit by bit and then uh, we'll go down into that sill and replace all that down there. We'll just have to see what's what down in there. It's, um, it's super thick. I don't know what they've done, but it's sort of jagged along here. What I don't know. What, they put a piece in it. Or it's the weirdest kind of way to work, but yeah. But all this will go. I'll just see how far we go. I don't know the extent of where we'll end up back in here. But all this, I'm going to have to re, re, rework all that. Cut it out and go again. But as I said here, if you look there, where it should have a nice um, profile line down along that pinch weld, it, <laughs> there's none. It's just this dirty big lump of, I don't know what it is. But anyway, it's just more fun. I'll have to hook it in. And then you come up here onto this top hinge and they've actually cut it off. And, and they've welded it from the other side but haven't even bothered to weld the back of it back on. Just like to give you a little insight onto how we approach a job or our mindset of how we work on cars. So basically the way we, we work up to a job, uh, we'll assess the job and then we work up to and into a job. We don't rush into a job at 100 mile an hour. Um, as we get into it, we'll look at the job on its merit as we go. And every job's different. They're all individual to themselves. And then the other side of it, what we like to know is the owner of the car. So we can deal with the car and the owner to make all that gel. So how we approach it is we hop into the job. Um, we won't rush the job. We'll work at a methodical pace. And the mindset all the way through is the end result. We're after that quality 110% in the end. That way the owner's very happy, we're really happy with the job, and that's the way we approach it. This job, for instance, is on its own merit. Um, we'll do specific things to this job in specific ways as to what the owner wants, as opposed to this job over here. This was a full sandblast, uh, a rework from, from uh, right hand to left hand, or sorry, left to right hand drive. That's a whole other thing on its merit, that job. But then, you know, you come back to the old classics. They've got their own individual character and the way that they get built again. So, as I say, we try to work with the owner, um, involve them all the way in the job, and we work at our pace. We're not the sort of uh, show that you jump in, bull at a gate, tear everything apart, because you can create a lot of ill work that way. Uh, if you're a little bit smarter about it, you can um, work correctly and have everything, when the job's finished, really nice and a good job. But it's just the mindset that you have all the way through and, and the focus to the very end of the job. So that's how we do it. 
Um, it's just our particular way of doing it. Obviously, other people probably work different to us, but I just thought I'd let you know that's the way we do it so you understand how our approach is. But if that helps to, to help you guys to know how we are, that's, that's good. But there you go, that's a little insight into us. Okay, well, let's get stuck into this. Let's see how much bog's in here. It's starting to, it looks a bit scary already. So hey, when I clean no, it up. No, so what have you got? You can see the patch there. Wow. And look, it's just straight over the top. So, you know, you're trying to rub it straight. If you're gonna follow that up, obviously you can see it's a big lump. Wow, that's so, crap. That's gotta be right if you want it to all line up. That patch has actually got a step in it. So um, anyway, what we'll do is underneath the same, they've just gone in on, over the top of the sheet metal with it. I think, um, We'll order a couple of those new seals. Yeah. And then uh, it's one of those things where it needs to be done right. All and nice and square and minimal body filler. Like when you look under there and you can feel, you know, there's there's a good five mil. Yeah, no, it's, that's a, crap. In the plate, they weld over the top. They haven't even so, you know, tried to step that in to make that fit. No, no effort at all. And like the pinholes on that, you know, it's yeah. still just bogged over. You can see in here. I'll zoom in a little bit. You see the little fracture cracks around that? Yeah, right through it actually. So yeah. I just scraped a little bit off before to see if it was bogged. Can you see it? Wait a sec, I'll just... You can see the fracture cracks, guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah through it, yeah. Just see how much it's got in it. Yeah. Wow, well, not a bad effort. Bog, oh damn, I never thought this side would be that bad. <laughs> Not bad, pretty good. Damn, this one I thought my side was gonna be easy. You know what, I'm kidding myself here. I need to go and get a jackhammer. Yeah, we were. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's cracked, hey. Is that rusty in behind it? Yeah, oh, it is too. It's hard to believe they put so that much into it. They, they, those areas are usually lead wiped. Yeah.
Wow. That's got layer upon layer upon layer. Ha! Oh. Man, that's... Wow. That whole, whole thing right across, that'll be just full of bog all that. Yeah, it'll be in interesting to see. Um, yeah, has that been cut through there as well? Yeah, it looks like Damn. it. Damn. I don't know what the hell they've done. It's the most, I don't know, the most stupidest repair what they've done to this car. It's all kind of back to front the way they've done it all. Of this, I'm going to get a jackhammer. <laughs> yeah. All right. What I'll do is I'll um, I'll get into that big grinder. Like that there. That's, that's probably a good 15 to 20 mil thick. That bog there. Yeah, that's what's well, cracked. Fracture cracked. So when we're finished with the guys, we actually want to lead wipe that back to factory. Some There's just something about chipping bog, isn't there? Yeah, no, that's what I don't want to be doing. I've got better things to do with me day. Oh, come on. Than chip bog. Hey, you love it. But uh, like I said, I think the smart thing to do here, I'll go and get a go down to Coates Hire and get a back a, a, a jackhammer. Wow. It never ends. The right way is to lead wipe here and then they'll last forever. It's gonna flex and move where it should. And you know, same with any, any big joins, your roof skins to your quarter panels on all these different um, old school muscle cars, they all flex. And if you're gonna bog them up, so later on it's gonna crack. Yeah. Uh, just, it, it's just gotta be done right. If you wanna do it correctly and, you, and you're gonna drive the car. All, the, it's, all, all it's, body shells, the way they're put together, and that's why they're spot welded and they've got joins where they have the joins. Yeah. They're not just thrown together. It's all about strength and the car's got to flex and move. And when you, you, you know, sitting on a nice highway, you're cruising along, that whole car's got a, a kind of through it all the time. It's got a slight movement. Everything's moving yeah. to a degree. And then you, when you go into a, a fairly decent gutter, or up on, on across a curb, the whole shell will twist and flex, and that's why they're designed the way they are to do all that to move. Yeah. And when you do stuff like this, when you hardcore a join like this has been done here, there's no give in it, and then after a while, when that car has been used for a little bit, it flexes, and, and then all of a sudden the bog cracks, and it comes from underneath. Next thing, the moisture goes in that crack, the rust starts, and yeah. away it goes. Up for us. That area is not meant to be bogged, and that it is what it is. And this area should be uh, lead wiped, and that's what we will do when we're finished with this car. So I'm going to rip into it now, clean it all up. I've got to take this guard off, and um, I'll get the big grinder now, and uh, that's that's next. Hey, pops, what do you reckon, mate? Yeah, I reckon you're a real thrill seeker, mate. You must love a challenge because that's a challenge. <laughs> Pops, how's it looking? Wow, that's, oh. <laughs> that's, uh, that's some of the roughest work I you'd oh, see. Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful and nice. Well done, isn't it? A for effort there, guys. They've just hacked this out, I, I don't even know how, put a half-baked patch in, but here they haven't even bothered to weld it. They just ploughed an inch of bog over the whole thing. That's just sheer butchery. The thing is, too, though, at the end of the day, yeah. well, you know, you do a trade um, to, to know how to repair things correctly, and, like, that's just not on that kind of work. It's unsafe. And then, for instance, you come up here, 
we'd have cut the back of that all well, that hinge that obviously had it chopped right off to try and adjust it and it's they've gone and welded the 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 front side of it but I haven't even bothered to fill this side back in like to do that correctly that should be V'd right out that join both sides and filled both sides with weld so it's as strong if not stronger than it was originally yeah but that's just um yeah and yeah and that's the other side too when we actually do our trade the reason for that if you're going to re replace that that rust correctly is for people's safety so you know you get hit in that corner with that dodgy guard it just crumble in like nothing and, and this hinge, like you get a decent hit, hit in that door, that'll just peel that hinge off like it wasn't even there. Yeah, so it just becomes a bit of a... Between the rust, you know, the, the, the average, the real bad rust work and that, that's just absolute rubbish. Like other countries around the world, their standards probably aren't as high as Australia, maybe, I'm not sure. Yeah. But I know here in Aussie, we have real high standard and quality of work. It's yeah. expected of the trade. Yeah, we do, hey. All right, guys, we're going to show you how much poo is actually in this car. Mick's going to clean this up. All right, got your mask on, Pops? Ready to roll. Yeah, check that out Dad, where the rust is under there yep and they've just bogged over it yeah that's just absolute crap so that's what we're saying when you back in the day when we used to bog on the metal you don't bog over rust it's a wonder it's held up as long as it has but mind you guys this this car this car has been in the garage has seen no sun so if this was left outside for every single day for, oh, what, what would you say, Dad, if it was... Oh, it'd take 12 months and it'd be just a hunk of crap. All this would all be blistering and coming off with a bit of sun on it. Yeah, it's just the fact that it's been locked away and it, it, yeah. it's sort of, sort of held up, but, but now it's not. I'll keep going here. I think we might even need to put a new, a whole new guard, new front. Yeah, it's one of those. We'll, we'll clean it all up and just see how really rough it is underneath it all. All right, I'll throw, um, I'll continue on. Righto, guys, we'll, yeah, we'll just keep going. You'll see the next part when we get to it. Yeah.
by the looks of it, they're pretty, they look factory, those welds, those spot welds, you can see how close, they definitely look factory, so that lot makes my life a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this outer piece of ugliness that these other people have put on and then we'll see what the inner skin's like. So I've made a window on the inside of the, the pillar I can go in once I get this off and I can address all this mess that's in here. So that gives me full access to the full inside of the pillar and I can get it really good. So where this mounts on again will be nice and solid. But the, the, this uh, barrel part of the, uh, the hinge, if you like, that's completely shot, so it'll be gone. I'll chop that off. I have some um, new barrels machined up, and they'll fit on really nice. But I want to get start on the outside, get rid of this skin, and then just go from there. Bit of a, a process, but bit by bit. Not, a, not go stupid and just cut big chunks out of it to start with. I just want to see what I've got to start with. Yeah, sounds good. Well, as you can see guys, it's just flapping in the breeze, that patch. So, I'll end up, I'll take this whole piece out that they've put in, replace it, do the inner, 
fix all this pinch weld area and then I'll chop this right out, inner and outer, replace the whole lot. And then where, where this hinge plate goes in, I'll actually strengthen it right up so it'll be good and solid again. But it's just had, um, yeah, I, I think it's been actually repaired with a stick welder back in the day. Yeah, it looks like a stick welder, eh? Hey? Yeah, yep. It's that rough, it's that bird shitty. Um, it looks like it's been done with a stick welder. Yeah. All right. What's it like? Well, have a go at it. It just looks like to me that's stick welder back in the day. Someone's tried to do it all with a stick welder. And I don't know what they've done. They sort of half, I don't know, just tore bits off and bird shitted bits. And it could have been stick welder though. That looks like stick to me. Or definitely done out on someone's farm or something. Yeah, looks like it. Now, have a look down inside there now. All down through here, it's all bird shitted all in under trying to hold that hinge plate in. Ooh. So what they've done is, they've put a patch on this side of it as well. Big patch up here. Oh yeah. And, and you can show you how weak it is, it's just like all over the shop. So what I'll do is, yeah. where they've put that in, I'll cut that all out, right out, right out, down there, up through there, make up new bits. Yeah. Double skin this again, clean all that up, make sure that's nice and solid. Because at the moment, like it's just flapping. Yeah. It's not even, like it's it's not even really, it's not well, it's just sitting on the top of it down inside there, it's just anywhere. That's the height. Yeah, now I can see it's better. Yeah, so that, like I said, a dirty big piece of crap they've put in there, I'll just take that out. Fix all this pinch weld up where they've just butchered it to death. And put a nice new bit over it, get nice and square. Weld yeah. that um, plate back onto it. I'll Probably what I'll do is I'll... Um, Put a um, couple of half or, or two, maybe three half inch holes on through this top skin, and then I'll plug it in onto this. Oh yeah, nice. on the on the new bit. Plus I'll run some in behind it. Yep, nice and strong again. Nice and strong, and then I'll make a double skin up for the outer, get it nice and flush and square, so that's solid as. Yeah. All right. Pretty crucial, Mick, isn't it, to get in the centre of those spots? Yeah. It's got to be pretty good. I don't think it'll rest down.
Okay guys, we're knocking off for the day. Um, we're, we're ready to, to out the door. But before we go, um, the GDR XU1 stuff, we've had some awesome comments come back from you guys. But no one's really certain of what the GDR XU1 means. We've had some good comments and some not so good. No one's really certain. But um, we're not sure the R is for rally or for racing. Yeah, we had a couple of comments. A guy said it's actually for ra uh, rally. So and not the racing. Yeah, not the racing because back then there wasn't racing. So yeah, it's pretty. It's just it's just different. We're not sure. And yeah. the X XU one side of it. Um, so there might be somebody out there that worked for GM at the time that's got um, sort of really correct knowledge of what it was for and what went on. Yep. Um, or you may know somebody. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, from Holden back in the day. Eh? Yeah. yeah. But they'd be getting on now, wouldn't they? Like. Working back then. Careful, mate. That's, that's a bit. There well, you go. <laughs> oh yeah, you sort of. Who knows? But um, yeah, but if someone's got some, re you know, correct and, and true knowledge of it all, yeah. let us know so we can it'd let. Be awesome. Yeah, let all you guys know, and, yeah. and it'll be really good all around. A little bit of knowledge about, but yeah, there's some really good messages on there, guys, and stories too. Uh, it's always good to read different stories and uh, just the knowledge as well from you guys. It's, the feedback's it's, great. It's so interesting. So everyone can read it obviously on there, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's great. It's, it's a real good thing. Yeah. So if you guys want to do that, come back. Great, it would be good for all of us. But I think that's it for the day and um, we'll catch you on the next one. And guys. We did, we've got to answer a couple of questions before we go. Um, people have been asking, are we going to blast this car or dip it or, you know, and there's reasons for that. We, we do what the owner requires of us. Um, we'll go the country mile if they want us to. If they don't want us to, we'll do exactly what they want, but we'll do what it takes to get the car correct. Yeah, that's right. But at the end of the day, they have the full yes or no to what we have to do. Yeah, so with, with, with this car, Matt is happy with the inside and underneath it. He just wants the problems fixed up. So, and it's not that rusty in the areas so far. No, it's, it's, it's got the little bits and pieces, but it's not bad. Yeah. It's not a basket case, no. so. We'll, we'll just, just we'll do what he needs and yeah, it'll and work we'll out. And we'll fix all the damaged areas and make it a good thing again. Yeah. So, but that's that's one of the questions. We thought we'd better answer it. Yeah. And um, yeah. So hopefully that satisfies some of that curiosity there, guys. But um, if you want to come back with some of that feedback for us, then we'll pass it on to everyone else. It'd yeah. be really good. But um, that's probably it for, for this episode. Yeah, that's it. All right, guys, until, what are we up to? Uh, Somewhere in there, I don't know. <laughs> um, we'll catch yeah. you on the next one, so yeah, cheers. Catch you guys, we'll see you on the next episode.